Okay, let's take a couple of minutes and talk about how to install this library. Now, as with a lot of other digital audio products, Berlin Woodwinds is available for download. Now, this is a pretty big library, and it uses the Continuata installer. So, if you purchase Berlin Woodwinds, very similar to the way a lot of other libraries works, you get a code, and you download the latest version of Continuata, paste in your code, and then it will come up with a list of files. It'll automatically fetch them and ask you where you want to put them, and it will start downloading them. And once it has downloaded all the parts that it needs, it will self-extract. Now, not all sound libraries work like that. Some just download, and then you have to extract them yourself. This particular library self-extracts itself, which is nice. The Continuata installer checks the files to make sure that they're all correct. Now, because this is a fairly large library, 67 gigabytes, this can take a good long while to download. The connection that I have here, where I downloaded this, is about 11 megabits per second. So I can get around 1.8, almost 2 megs, depending. You know, that's, it varies a little bit, but around 1.6, 1.7 megs per second. So at that kind of rate... It would take me around 11 or so hours to download just the main part of the library. Now, the expansion is another 7 gigs to download, so that's another couple hours on top of that. I think I think it was going to be about 13 hours. Now, what I did to make that less painful is I got a better plan for a day. But some of the things that I found is that even with a 50 megabit connection, which is what I upgraded to temporarily, the Continuata installer here was not taking full advantage of those speeds. Some of the files would pull down at around 20 megabits, and these are pulling from the Amazon S3 file storage servers. Occasionally, I would see 35, nowhere near the maximum speed connection that I had at the time of this download. Most of the time, it was hovering around between 8 and 12, maybe 15 megabits per second. That really wasn't doing it for me. So another way that you can do this is Continuata will email you download links. So if you get one of these libraries that uses the Continuata installer, you can take your code and usually the company will provide you with a link to get the actual download links instead of using this. And you can paste your code into the website and it'll email you links. And so you get emailed a whole bunch of links. And for this particular library, for Berlin Woodwinds, it was 56 links for the sample library and then a couple of more for some update files and, and whatnot. And so what I did is I opened up Chrome and I got about six simultaneous downloads going in Chrome. Then I opened up Firefox and I got another three or four simultaneous downloads in Firefox. And in that way, I was able to get all of the files and basically max out my connection because some of these were downloading pretty slow, which is just the way of things on the internet at this point in time. So that's kind of a way around that. Now, when I downloaded them in the browser, it defaults to putting those in, in a different folder than what Continuata was looking for. And so all I really had to do was when the downloads completed, I just transferred them over to the folder, which I pointed the installer to. And then when it finished downloading a file, it kind of rechecks all of the other files, and then those files would show up as being downloaded. It checks the integrity and all that good stuff, and, and they said they were, they were all good, and so it marks those as being completed, even though they're not in order, because this Continuata downloads the files kind of sequentially, however they come in to the list here. So I would have a number up here in the top of the list, you know, 1 through 10 were downloaded, then I started downloading them backwards in the browser from 56 up, and then I put them in, and so a little hack there to, to make it download faster. It worked. I was able to download it in uh, much less time, although it still took about seven hours or so, even with the faster connection, but, you know, there's a little bit of a, a little bit of monkeying around to do. Now, once you get everything kind of extracted, this is basically what you'll be kind of looking at, plus or minus some files. This is kind of the, the folder structure now. When you get into libraries that are of reasonable size, like this is, I mean, if you, we look in the samples folder here, it's about 75 gigs. That's compressed, though. You know, when, when you're looking at the system requirements for different libraries, a lot of them will have fairly modest requirements. You know, maybe dual-core processor, CPU, maybe quad-core. Usually they recommend a chunk of RAM, you know, 
uh, four, eight gigs, 16 gigs. You know, when they, when they talk about minimum, usually those are pretty low. When it comes to running more than one thing or more than one patch, the minimums kind of get blown out of the water. They, they don't really work anymore. So you may want to consider something like an SSD drive. Previously, I had a lot of my samples located on just a regular old three and a half inch mechanical 1.5 terabyte hard drive. This worked for just about everything. I wasn't really hindered too much in pulling up samples. You know, I had to wait a little bit as they loaded, but it really wasn't too bad. The last couple libraries kind of blew up my sample library quite large. And so things started to slow down a little bit. So I decided to get an SSD and that makes a dramatic difference in the speed that they load. So I put all my samples on a different hard drive. It's not my system drive and the SSD really, really helped. Things load very, very fast now. As you get into larger sample libraries and more complex sample libraries, you'll see a lot of people have a slave machine with 32 gigs of RAM in it to have all their samples loaded up and so that they can have access to them. I didn't really want to get into that right at this point. So I'm trying to, you know, keep things in check with this particular system, which is not a slow system by any means. This is a, a six core processor, which is pretty fast. It has 24 gigs of RAM and the audio application that I use to compose and sequence and record is Reaper. And so that doesn't have any problem using a lot of RAM. And so that's not really a big deal at all, but eventually the RAM will run out. So that's just something you want to consider. You're probably not going to be doing a lot of uh, working with these type of libraries on a laptop with four gigs or eight gigs, maybe even 16 gigs of RAM because the, your RAM is going to run out really quick and you're going to have to you know, do a lot of kind of juggling and, and bouncing around of the samples there. So you want to make sure that you have an appropriate system to be able to run a library like Berlin Woodwinds or, you know, even Hollywood orchestral woodwinds from East West's collection, Vienna Symphonic Libraries, Woodwind Library, and even the CineSample stuff too. Although the libraries are not nearly as large, they do take a little bit of CPU horsepower to be able to run. And so that's something to consider before you get something like this, you know, look on the forums and I'm sure you'll, you'll figure that out really, really fast there. But uh, an SSD is a really great way to speed up load times. So in the next section, we're going to look at a bunch of patches in Berlin Woodwinds. We're going to look at setting it up inside a contact and check out a whole bunch of cool stuff coming up in the next section. 